Good evening, sons and daughters of the living God. God is good. And all the time, may I see a hand of someone, just one person who says, I am happy to be here this evening. Let me see you wave your hand. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, you are welcome. Neighbor, God bless you. Now, some of you, as you are speaking, you are not smiling. I don't know what has made you annoyed up to now. You see, the Bible says when you are angry, don't let the sun do what? Go down. But why do you want to allow the sun to go down? It's about to go down right now. May I see you smile if you are happy today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, dear sister, for that lovely piece of music. Reminding us that, yes, uh, we have no abiding city right here on earth, but we have a beautiful city where we need to pursue until we make it to get there. Hallelujah, church. May I recognize the presence of all the elders that are here. I am delighted to see you together with your spouses. Unless you are here alone, I shouldn't realize and notice because you have to go and pick your wife and come so that you learn together. May I recognize the presence of all couples that are here and all the singles that are here, God bless you. May I also recognize any students that are here. We are delighted that you have come. Thank you also to my lovely Nakambala who is here all the time, regardless of how busy her schedule was in the day. She tries by all means to say, we have to go together. And personally, I think... Uh, I also enjoy preaching when she's watching because I know that people will gain more confidence in me. Hallelujah. Yeah, because Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, dear shepherdess. Thank you, everyone, for coming yet again. Today, we are outside the Garden of Eden. Yesterday, we were inside Eden where we saw the advantages of being inside. We saw the disadvantages we saw the devil coming on board until our first parents went out but today we are outside Eden a place where you and I have to personally choose a partner God has already created a partner for you and it's up to you now to choose or be chosen it's your own will and God will only approve without wasting our time today on day number two the subject the title of the sermon says the microscope of choosing a life partner the microscope of choosing a what a life partner it is important to ensure that we make the right choice even as we enter into holy matrimony it is not a must that yes you should be married if you not be married you will not see the kingdom of heaven well it's not like that it is your choice you can choose to marry you can choose not to marry but if you choose to marry there is something that should be done there are some steps that should be followed god's hand should be there to approve now when you see this other word microscope it looks to be too long of a word for nothing. Well, a microscope is simply an object, a thing or apparatus that, that is usually found in laboratories and it is used specifically to see objects at a clear view. It can either magnify them, bring them closer, so that you see every part of that particular object. And so we need such a thing even as we pursue our life partners. Now... The book Ministry of Healing, page 359, says, Let every step toward a marriage alliance be characterized by modesty, simplicity, sincerity, and an earnest purpose to please God and honor God. So there are four qualities that we have seen which someone should be able to, to stand upon even as they 
not enter into this step of getting towards a place where they choose a partner. Number one, this person should be simple. Don't complicate matters. Looking for someone who looks extravagant. Looking for someone who is somehow not of this world. Ellen White here in Ministry of Healing says, someone who is simple, simplicity. The other word there is modesty. Modesty here is something that is done in order. Talk about how they talk, how they eat, how they walk. Do they walk as if somebody is chasing them all the time? Or even as they walk, they please God and they, they are not there to injure themselves. Modesty. Even as they dress, are they dressing well? Is their body covered or their body is already uncovered like tomato and, and rep that the marketeers have put on a stand for people to come and choose and buy as long as they have money. And the other word there is sincere. How true, how real, how authentic is this person? Are they part of this world? Do they speak the truth? And what about an earnest purpose? What goals do they have? If you, you are there to chat, you love each other, you are knowing each other, as you chat, what goals do they desire to achieve? We will go into details in these things even as we trade upon today's subject. Let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 24. Genesis 24, reading on verse number 1, we will go up to verse number 4. Genesis 24, verse 1, 2, 3, up to verse number 4. What does the Bible have to say to you and I? Genesis chapter 24. I will read in your hearing from the New King James Version. This is what the Bible says. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And the next verse says, So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh. Verse 3, And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Verse number four says, but, but you shall go to my country and you and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us seek the Lord in prayer together. Holy One of Israel, Lion of the tribe of Judah, Prince of peace and Lord of lords, glory, praise, and honor be given unto you because you are worthy to be exalted. Father, even as we have gathered in this place, we thank you for the gift of life and we thank you for your presence in this place. Even as we delve into this spiritual discourse, even as we tread on holy ground, even as we talk about issues of family life, specifically on how to be able to select a marriage companion. Lord, let divinity increase and let humanity diminish. Even as we begin the steps of this spiritual discourse, talk to us, Lord, touch us in a special way. May you sharpen our brain cells so that we will be able to comprehend your word. Let everyone who is listening to your word find purpose, meaning, and understanding in your word. Be with us, Father, even as we begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we have read again, just like yesterday, from the first book of the Bible. Now we are in the 24th chapter, and we are brought to a time when Abraham, the first man of the promise, the one who received the promise from God, that he will bless him and he will multiply his seed. Now Abraham is well advanced in age, and to make matters worse, he delayed to have a child in his marriage either the child from the house help or the child of the promise Abraham delayed. But now he's, he's grown in age and now 
His son also is of age. And at this point, Isaac is 40 years. At least at this time in the Hebrew times, a child or a, a, a human being, a boy, is regarded to be grown and he is able now to handle stuff of life. And so a great counsel and caution is given to his help, who is Eliezer. Say, come here, Mr. Man. You see, my son, he has grown. He needs a wife. But come, let me give you a task. Don't choose any woman from this place where we live. Go to my home country. And when you are there, I will give you symbols and signals and things that you should see. Look at them, observe carefully, and you will be able to make a right choice for my son. Don't worry, there is no mobile phone, there is no WhatsApp, but just go there. I will communicate with you in the spirit, and what you will do will be the correct thing if you will listen to me, because what I am telling you is what I have been instructed by the Lord. Hallelujah, church. Marriage is a serious matter. Marriage is for matured people. Here, Abraham makes Eliezer to make an oath. Adventist homepage 43 again says, Marriage will influence and affect your life both in this world and in the world to come. So it is not something simple. It is something of a serious matter because your choice will either enable you to enjoy life. Your choice will enable you to gain weight. Your choice will enable you to glow and sparkle and just be at peace. Your choice can enable you to get sick. Your choice can enable you to die prematurely, to die of heart attack, to die of stress. And so... This issue of marriage is of a great importance. Now, factors one should consider before saying, I do. Factors that someone should consider. Point number one, don't marry the person you think you can live with. Are we together, somebody? Don't marry the person you think you can live with. Marry the one you can't live without. There are times when we look at somebody, ah, the car they are driving, they have parked there, they have come in the church, the way they are walking, the way they go to sit. That one, I think, can be my husband. That one can be my wife. It is not like that. There is something more detailed. There is something undercover that we should pay attention to. So don't just marry or get married because you think marry because the Lord has approved and beyond reasonable doubt you have seen and weighed all scales, checks and balances on your checklist. You are not perfect. Your partner is not perfect. But at least you have seen beautiful indicators. Then you say maybe he's already established. I can be connected to him. Even somebody who's not established has potential. Maybe by you two coming together, you obtain the favor of God and the blessing of God. And the two of you will be able to upgrade one another and go to a level where you anticipate. Many women have missed out on gentlemen and brothers that they think they are nobodies. Babalanga, they think there is nothing that can come out from them. Look at the potential. Weigh the potential. Remember, you are still young. If you are looking at resources, where will this young man already get these resources? But they are in his head and his potential can offload them, can bring them out. And you will get to a level where you will praise the Lord for seeing you through that level. Hallelujah, somebody. Dear brothers, don't just quickly propose, throw your manifesto because this one is the president's daughter, this one is the, the whichever man's daughter of a high profile. It is not like that. These positions, these titles, they can come, they can go. But marry somebody because you love them, because there is something more than what they are connected to. There is something more than what they are at that time. Remember, life still goes on. Marriage is just the beginning point and you have a long way to go. Point number two. 
Don't marry someone who has characteristics that you feel you cannot tolerate. Don't get married to such a one. They have characteristics you feel you can't tolerate, such as they have close friends, very close friends to them that drink beer, alcohol, and they tell you, oh, those are my friends, and they come drunk, and they, there's a smell of alcohol everywhere. Don't go ahead. Don't even waste your time in accepting. Don't even entertain. How can they be his friends if they drink alcohol? Cut them out until they see that you are a good person and they will come to you. They will change. Or maybe he shouts at you and you are okay with that. If he shouts at you before he even marries you, then he, when you get married, he will just get a whip and whip you when he is annoyed or when he has taken uh, that kind of drink. You'll be able to stay away from all characteristics that you cannot tolerate. It is not wrong because you are not married, you are not divorcing. It is better to break or terminate an engagement than to divorce. Dear brother, don't marry someone who dresses in a way that nobody approves. Even somebody of a low class, when they look at them, their dressing is not appropriate. You see, today we have a problem of dressing even in the church. And so most of the sermons that I preach, it is rare that I conclude without talking about dressing. Because it also conveys a communication. What you put on and how you put on, you will be addressed in that way. You are in a dust coat, you are in your stethoscope. Somebody will say, you are a doctor. You are in a uniform, your gun is there or your pistol is there. Someone will say, you are an officer. Today, when you go to the malls, whether you like it or not, you will find that three quarters of the women there, our sisters, are not dressed. Maybe they go to the tellers and they tell them before they finish making this outfit, they say, no, you can give me, it's okay, let me, let me wear it. And you see, when somebody puts it on, well, when you are coming in front and you are crossing ways, I mean, you are walking, there are people, the dress is long enough. But when you get somewhere halfway, well, the dress is torn. It, it is new, but it is already torn up to somewhere there. And you wonder, but what kind of attire is this? And as they go, the wind comes, they want to pull out this, one, and it goes the other way, and, and everything is left outside. Leave them so that people can see. That is what you want. Why are you pretending to cover when you want people to see? Today, the dressing has changed. In the olden days, for you to see the breast of a woman, at least you see her when she's breastfeeding a child somewhere. But today, breasts are paraded everywhere like solar panels. They are there, and when you are out, you can just see breasts everywhere. People are putting on something, well, it, it will just start from there. You can even see, what, what, what is covered is only the nipple. The rest is out, it's a solar panel. Let it be charged by the sun. The dressing is not good in today's world. We need a change in that way. One time, I was walking outside the gate with my wife. And as we were going, somebody wore something short, and they realized, ah, I think that should be our pastor. And then they tried to pull it down. Now you see, what magic will you have? Even if you pray the shortest prayer, Lord, make this skirt long, it will not happen. You want to pull it down? Well, what will happen one day? If it goes down, it will remain, ear up, you remain like that. And then people will be able to see what you want them to see. So... What I'm talking about is characteristics. In other words, what is her character? Because the way a woman dresses also speaks much about her character. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's progress. Don't marry impulsively. Don't be in a hurry. Don't think you are too late. Don't marry impulsively. You are on a bus. You are going to the copper belt. Now where you are seated... Well, there's a spare seat and somebody, the conductors are loading people and people are coming on board. This lady comes and you even, you're even fidgeting there so that at least ah, the opposite sex should sit, not a, a gentleman. And then she comes also to sit there. 
And as you go, you even stop over by Big Bite, whatever you buy, some mail there, you buy chips. And as you go, you start chatting. And as you, as you are getting to the copper belt, you are so grounded into each other, such that you, you are already thinking of going to the parents of this lady. How do you know maybe she has just successfully recovered from her fourth abortion and she is traveling back home? And you want to get married to her. Why are you in a hurry? Maybe she's recovering from an STI. Why do you want to be someone who will get leftovers because of rushing? What are you rushing for? Take your time. You will have all the time together with your wife. But take your time to choose. Identify timely and take time to develop your love. Maybe you go to a funeral. I saw one gentleman, he went to a funeral and he had the motive to marry. And he was looking around to see the young lady who will be crying the most, thinking that, ah, that one is the one who has a soft heart. You see, she's even crying so much. Who picks a, a wife like that? Don't marry impulsively. Number four, if you are a deeply committed Christian, do not allow yourself to be unequally yoked. If you are a committed Christian, you can summarize it like that. Do not allow yourself to be unequally yoked. Because your Christianity will fade. You used to come to church every Sabbath. Next time when you get married, you will be delaying because of the kind of spouse that you have. Maybe they are not interested in religious stuff. These church things of yours, they are not for them. But you were in a hurry and you are a committed Christian, but you allowed yourself to be unequally yoked. Do not move in with a person before you are legally married. This is another point. Do not move in with somebody. Before you are married, you are already going to his home. You are there sweeping. Who is assigning you all those tasks you will find yourself in danger and you will make the wrong choice let us proceed we are behind time so we will cruise a little the next point says don't get married too young don't get married too young yesterday i was watching the tv and i saw many uh, reports giving a, a big number of teenage pregnancies that are there and among them, some of them are married. Don't get married too young. Research has shown in a book written by Dobson, Dr. Dobson, he's a marriage counselor, saying those who were between the ages of 14 and 17 are twice as likely to split or divorce than couples who wait until they are in their 20s or over their 20s. You are 14 years. Now today with these GMO foods that are there, somebody is 14 years, they are already competing with their mother, even in the body size. They are almost the same as their mother. So they think what their mother can do, even them they can do. What the mother can handle, even them they can handle. Just because now the chest that was flat has become somewhere there at 16 years and they think they can be able to breastfeed because they see their mother breastfeeding. Don't get married too young. There are repercussions. There are things that will follow you that you will be unable to handle because you are young. The decision to marry. The decision to marry. There are some points also we can look at. Marry from the same faith. When now you are final, you are setting the decision, marry from the same faith. You are Seventh-day Adventist. If there is no Mr. Wright, Mrs. Wright here in uh, Woodlands Extension, you can go to Chalala, Maine. You can go to Rockview. You can go to another congregation. You will find somebody whom you will pair with. And how can you even marry or be married? You don't even go for camps. You don't attend all these programs. How will you be located? Even when you get your phone, you don't stand in one place. Even when you are talking, you realize the network is not happening. Do you still remain like a Zescopo where you are? No, you move. Move somewhere there. Hello, are you able to, to, to get me? You move again. 
Even when you want to get married, move from where you are. Don't be fixed. You are not a plant. You are not a tree. You have legs. You can move. Go somewhere else. Identify. Be identified. But don't be too, again, overzealous to show that, ah, manjeva, I think, but it's time, but timing, you know, you know. Be someone who is able to work in a mature way. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy, maybe we can read this one, just a few verses there. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We have a challenge here as a church because many of our members are losing it and leaving because they are getting married to people of different faith. So let us read a few verses there. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We can begin from... Uh, uh, verse number one, I'll read it quickly. When, when the Lord your God brings you into the land you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gigashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Verse two, and when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant, no covenant, no agreement with them, nor shall you show mercy to them. Now listen to verse 3. Nor shall you make marriages with them. There's nothing that the Bible leaves out. You shall not give your daughter to their son. Don't be in-laws with them. The Bible goes on here to say, you shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. And the Bible goes on and on, addressing a chosen people of God. So, marry from the same faith. The next point says, consider the age. You can't be in your 20s and you are so deeply in love with someone who is in their 40s. Where are your friends? Where is your age met? There is one young lady who was uh, 22 years of age at that time, and she fell in love with a 42-year-old man. And she went to tell the mom and dad, say, Mom, dad, I found a partner, and I am ready to, to get married to him. They will make arrangements. They will come home. And the mother said, oh, are you sure, my daughter? Oh, that is good. Well, how old is that man? And um, the daughter said, he is, uh, he's only 42. You know, age is just a number, mom. Don't worry. Don't look at the way it is with you. And it's just a number. And uh, the mother said, now this is the genesis of problems. She tried to talk to the daughter to say, this is not right. This man, this gentleman is way older than you. The daughter said, if you will not accept my decision, then I will kill myself. It's better I get married to him or you lose me because I'll take my life. So don't consider the age. Don't leave a very big disparity in the age. Let us read from the writings. Ministry of Healing, uh, page 358, says, In most cases, there should not be a great disparity in age. Bear in mind our lifespan, our children, physical strength. Let there be a sizable age. Well, it may not be specific, but at least there should be a minimum of maybe three and a half years and above, and maybe a maximum of about seven and a half years, maximum, at least in that circle, you are almost in the same age. That is okay. Not 10 years. That is your elder brother. That is not your friend. You will not even be, be, be friends. One will be older. The other one will be older early. The other one will still remain behind. The other one will be catching up with age. The other one will be running, trying to catch up. But you will not catch up because, I mean, you are in real life. Someone is gone. You are coming behind. Keep coming. Hope you will catch up. Good luck. So, there shouldn't be a, dis a, a great disparity in age. Moreover, it brings complications. Did you know that getting married with a very large age difference brings complications upon the children you deliver? They will have mental illness problems. They will have challenges here and there. They will just not be children that are standard because of the great age disparity, especially in our time. 
Then also, the next point, the decision to marry, consider the attraction. Here now we are talking about beauty coupled with character. Today the world is destroyed because we are seeing artificial hips. Well, not all hips are artificial. But now what makes us realize that they are artificial hips is we hear those megaphones. You see, I don't know in this place, but in my place where I come from, I hear somebody, you know, with a, a microphone or speakerphone saying, Mabatri, Yosira, Yakumotoka, Tigulaga, Tigulisa, whatever they say. And so now when you go to town, you hear as you are passing, you are going about your business, Kulima Tower area, Mankwara Yamahi, Mankwara Yosweti Sakumeso, Tigulisa. And now, bear in mind that there are people that buy those things. So as we talk about the attraction, yes, consider the beauty of that woman. But this beauty should come with a price of hard work, character. Because again, it will be chaos. You get this woman, she's beautiful, you take her home. She's far near from having good manners you have problems. She's beautiful, but she has no manners, not even in the negative. Zero degrees, mannerless person. You will be in chaos, my friend. So this beauty should come with character. She's beautiful. She knows her package. She covers it well. She just uncovers it for you. That is a beauty. Not beauty. Somebody parades everything for everyone to see like it's a motorcade. That even allows other people to stop and watch over. Everyone is seeing the motorcade going. So, <laughs> look at the attraction. The attraction should go with uh, the beauty. Rachel was beautiful. Sarah was beautiful. This is why the other king uh, admired Sarah and this gentleman had to lie. No, she's my sister and so on. Look at Queen Esther, beautiful, chosen amongst all the other women. She decorated herself properly. Not the beauty that again will scare men. You see, the beauty nowadays scares men. Give me about five minutes. I don't know, maybe, maybe within ten minutes we should finish. Not the beauty that scares men. You see, in the olden days, women, when you look at them, they just look the way you look here nicely when they flip their eyes they are not scary. They are not chasing any wind. But today, when you see some ladies out there, and uh, when they turn around and look at you, if you're in a queue, if you are a scary man, you want to run away at least five meters. Why? Because these things in their eyes are just long, and you wonder. So there, there are other women that have abnormal eyelashes, or what is happening here? When they look at you, they are decorated with so many colors on the face, more than the colors you identify or you can see on a rainbow. You are beautiful just as you are. Without those colors, you look good, my sister. Don't trouble yourself. Just take your time. Have your one hour in the bathroom. Have your 30 minutes dressing. Comb your hair to the eastern side. Put a bit of what you will put. Don't go to the excess. Look at your fingernails. Just let them be okay. If they are too long, why should you compete with the claws of a chicken? You are a human being. <laughs> you are a human being. Let the chicken be a chicken. You are a human being. So your attraction is there. Do not worry. Just do your honest part. Mutual interest. What, what things do you have in common? Maybe she likes to watch football. You also like to watch football, especially after church in the evenings. You can watch. That's okay. Do you have things in common? Does she love singing? Does she love to do um, uh, courses that have to do with medical work and medical missionary work? Yeah. Do you have things in common so that you move in the same way? Because if you don't have mutual interests, you will walk in the parallel because two cannot walk together unless they are what? Agreed. So mutuality should be there. You love to stay home to play music, gospel music, watch music together. Not the other one loves gospel music. The other one wants to listen to your maps. There will be a friction there. Even your children, some of them, they want to listen to God and vocals. Some of them, they want to listen to, to, to your maps. So have mutual interest. The other thing is goals and desires. You see, 
you are going into marriage. Your job is not only to bring children, your job, you are not only born to breastfeed for the rest of your life. There is a school you need to pursue. You are done with delivering children. Praise be to God. Go to school, upgrade, and go to the next level in life. Pursue your goals, your dreams, your desires. You are married, but you still have life. You still have a personality. You still have to attain position. You still have to go to greater heights. Hallelujah, church. What about the family? Consider the family where you are getting married to. Because of getting married too early, somebody got married to an armed robber. She later on discovered that the father to this husband of her has died because the flying squad was pursuing him and killed him in the company of his friends. Again, she realizes that the immediate elder brother to the husband died in prison because he was charged for murder. Again, she realized that this man was actually married before. She's the second wife and he has children elsewhere. Consider the family because you are joining together. Relatives will come and visit you will be able to receive many people. Some will be introducing themselves to you. Know the family where you are getting connected. Religion, we have talked about it. It's under the faith. The friends, we have talked about it. Who is yoked with your partner? Even as they are talking to you. Maybe it's a lady. She's your friend. You are courting. You want to marry her. Three quarters, if not 85% of the phone calls she receives are from boys, are from gentlemen. My friend, you will not be alone when you take that woman in. All those are acting like men on standby. They are like men seated on the bench waiting for an injury there. Once there's an injury, they will come on board. She is a lady and many of her friends are male. Be cautious about that. You are also a gentleman. Three quarters of the friends you have are only females. You will bring problems in the home and there will be friction all the time. Talk about the nationality. Are you from the same country? If you are in the same country, it is okay. It could be different tribes. It doesn't matter. You are from the same country. You will be able to understand the background. But if you are to marry across nationality, you should be slow, you should find out, you should be careful because you may end up getting someone or being gotten by somebody whom no one even admires. It is only you. This is the garbage. Ah, you've done well, please. You are the city council. Come and get this garbage and take it, keep it. It is yours, my friend. So if you are trading on those lines, please be careful. So finally, the stability of marriage is a byproduct of an iron wheeled determination to make it work. If you choose to marry, enter into that covenant with the resolve to remain committed to each other for life. Never threaten each other during angry moments to leave your mate or to chase your mate. Enter into it with an iron-wheeled determination. Problems will come. You see, when you look at a rose flower, it is beautiful, colorful, but then it has thorns. Those thorns are there to protect it. Those challenges called thorns are there to make us strong. Those thorns on a rose are the ones that make no animal go and eat it. Even cows, as they are grazing goats, they will not touch the rose because they see the thorns there. No one can so effectually ruin a woman's happiness and usefulness and make her life heart-seekening burden as her own husband. So what you choose today, my sister, will be able to influence you if you had hips, they can either grow bigger. And if you had a behind, your geography was good, you are blessed, it will continue in the blessed way. Because you are happy in your home. If you are a man, you have your potential, you get married to this woman, instead of her ruining you, she 
gives you the encouragement, the strength, you will be able to excel to another greater level. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Marriage is not something you should fear. Don't fear the statistics that, are, that keep on rising every year. They are rising because people are missing out on a certain point somewhere. They have neglected the principles of God and they are standing on their own. In marriage, if you don't form a triangle between the two of you and God at the center, then you will head for destruction. To those who are already married, listen to this. You made the best choice and what you have is the best for you. Continue building it until we enter the kingdom of God. To those who are still married, avoid avenues of arguments. Pursue peace constantly. Give out love. Overflow in love. Look for avenues that will bring laughter and joy in the home. When things are hard, simply relax. Pray to your God. Don't be moody to your children. Sometimes don't be annoyed and you come outside, you find the dog on the door. It's making matters worse. It is not moving. Don't kick the dog because it doesn't even know what is happening. Just contain yourself Worship God and never entertain thoughts of regret to say, maybe I should have picked Lady A instead of Lady B who I'm with. What you have is the best. You made the choice alone. God did the approval and God is with you and God will abide with you. Do good things for one another. Go on a tour. Go put fuel in your vehicle. Take a drive. Go and see these animals. See the big falls. Go according to your level, your capacity, do good things for one another. May God bless you and may God keep you. Hallelujah.